I'm Patrick Bailey with whiteboardcoder.com. Today is June 10th, 2018. And in this video, I'm going to show how I solved a problem recently where I was trying to uh, SSH into a remote machine and then pull something down, clone something from a Git repository onto that machine. And I kind of wanted to use my own, my own SSH keys from my machine, not the machine I got logged into. So I'm going to show you how to do that, how I did that using... Um, by using by passing keys using the SSH, SSH agent tool. Okay, just to show you the problem I'm having. Um, so if I go log into one of my boxes, I'll just go log into an HA proxy box I have locally. Um, so if I log into that box and I want to clone something, let me make sure nothing's here. Okay, so I can do a git clone, and I'm going to pull something from a private git repository. So I'll go over here on github.com where I have access to a private Git repository and I'll probably be blanking most of this page out because it is private. But if I go here and I go clone with an SSH, I can copy that and I can go back here and I can attempt to clone it. So if I attempt to clone that, I'm going to get rejected because I, I don't, my, I, I'm on this server that does not have my personal private public keys on my server and I didn't uh, add any keys on this server that I, that I put the public key onto the Git, GitHub account. So basically I don't have access. So if I do this, I can't read the repository. Do you, are you, make, please make sure you have the correct access rights. In this case, I don't. Now what I could do is I could clone via the HTTPS and pull that down. The only bad thing about that is every single time I want to, when I clone it, I got to put my name in and type in my password. Not the end of the world. But every time I want to push or pull, I got to do that again. So that can become kind of a headache, um, depending on how many times you're doing it. So, what am I? How can I fix this problem? So that's my problem. There's a couple of ways you could fix it that I would would have done in the past before I figured this one out. That someone, well, I shouldn't say figured out. Someone showed me this a couple of weeks ago. Uh, what I would have done if I really wanted to solve this problem and not not use HTTPS, I would have done one of two things. Well, really, only one thing. What I would have done is logged into this remote machine, created a new public private key pair, and then take that public key and add that to my account on GitHub. And then I could pull this down just fine. Um, the only problem with that is now my public private key are on a server. And, at and if I'm at work, you know, this is my own server here at home. So it's just me. So I don't necessarily have a problem doing that because I'm the only one who has access to this. But if I have a machine where we have 10 admins who have access to the same machine, Probably not the best practice because somebody could potentially act as you and pull stuff down or push stuff up as you. So not, you know, everywhere I've worked, it has never been a problem, but it's just probably not good practice. Now, another thing you could do, which I would not do anywhere, is to take my, my private and public keys that I use on my machine and then copy them over to this machine and use them that way. That would work, too. But I wouldn't even do that with my own private servers. It's just uh, bad practice, really bad practice. Because now, whatever I have actually access to from my machine, not only GitHub, but all kinds of other things I may have access to, like the server itself, um, people can copy that and be me everywhere. Bad, bad plan. So that's the problem. Those are some silly ways to solve it. Now let me go over how you can solve it with SSH agent. And before I dive into this, I did do a blog post on this recently, so I'll have a link to that on the show notes. Um, and also some links to some other, you know, quick things that I found on the internet because I was worried about the dangers of this. Now, what I'm going to show you is better than my first alternative, but it is by no means super foolproof because what we're going to be doing is, is, is passing our keys over there. And although it's fairly secure, but that other machine where people have root access, they could become you and they could utilize your key. So they really can't copy it, but they can utilize your key while you're logged into that session and could pretend to be you and, and do things like that. But the minute you log out of your session, that's no longer the case. Um, so not perfect, but better. So uh, if anyone has any advice on there on better things you could do with this, or if this is, or if that's just, just the case where it's like, it's better, but not perfect. You know, you, gotta, you have to pick your poison and think what you're doing and think on your team. Uh, what's the best thing to, for you doing and, and how, you know, best practices, you be safe. Um, so what you can do is from the command line, you want to start the SS agent. So you do eval dollar sign SS agent to start this up if it's not running already. And so now that starts up and then we want to add a key to it that we're going to forward. 
And in fact, you can add many keys. So there's there's a convenience to that if you happen to have more keys that you need access to. Uh, so I do sh add, oh, and then I do uh, I add my private key to it. So I add my private key, and the next thing I do that I I do you don't have to do this is I like to make sure that it really got added and things are really there. So I can do sh dash add dash l to list all my keys that are in there. So I can list it. There's the key. Looks good. Life should be fine. So now the next thing I can do is I can log into my HA proxy box. Now, if that's all I do, I haven't accomplished anything. I haven't forwarded this. I haven't passed through any of the keys. What you can do, you have to do, have to do is a capital, a dash capital A. That'll pass the keys in. So let me do that. So now I'm over here. Now the next thing I can do is I can do another quick test. I can do SSH add over here dash L to see if the keys went through. And I can see, yeah, the key went through. I should be good. So now I have the key. Now I can go over back through my command history and now I can clone this and it should have my public key. There we go. I got it. So it's been pulled down and that's a nice situation where you could use that. Um, also, if I had, I could also use that to SH somewhere else. So uh, well, I don't need an A in this case, but if I had some place called somewhere else, Right now, my public key, public private key are part of my session. And so if I could only log into this box and I wanted to get to another box that this one was connected to that I don't have direct access to, I could go to this box, pass my key in as I do this, and then log to that box. So there's some other neat things you can do with it. Um, so there you go. So that solved my problem. Now, I'm going to show you a few other little things that you can do to make your life easier if this is a continual problem for you that you do all the time because uh, executing that, you know, there's a few steps that, you know, I honestly don't remember all the time. I'd be like, okay, I got to do SAT eval. I got to add it. I got to check it. I got to make sure to do the capital dash A. And if I don't do it in three weeks, I'll forget. So either I got to take notes or if there's a case where you always do it on a certain machine, uh, there's a few tricks that can help you out. So I'm going to show a few tricks here. Now, for many reasons, I like using a config file in my .ssh folder uh, because I can actually configure certain aspects for every single server I log into. Um, and also you can configure stuff for doing this, for passing your keys in. So if I do, oh, there we go. If I do a by locally dot sh config, now you may not have a config file. So by default, you don't have one. And oh, I've got to go to the end, don't I? Plus 1200. There we go. I just don't want to show you every little thing I have in here. So I went to the bottom. So here you can list hosts. So I can give a short name. In this case, HA proxy, which I was using before, and then list out the host name, which is actually where it's at, which could be a DNS entry or it can be a, an IP address locally. And then one of the things I like to use or have ha had to use often is you can set a username. So if you don't, when you're SSHing somewhere and you don't put a username in there, it'll use your local username. And a lot of times those match up, depending on where you're working and what you're doing. Sometimes they don't. And if they don't, you have to put your username in. Or you can set up this SSH config file to put that in. And so then you don't have to type it in. So now that's why I can do SSH H proxy. It refers to this and I go to the right place with the right name. Now what I can do is I can add, I can tell it basically to uh, forward that to, to forward the SSH key. So on this guy, I can say forward agent. Yes. And you're done. If the key, if the eval is running and the keys are added, it will forward it for you. I don't have to put that dash capital A. Uh, but this also has some interesting aspects you could do. So what I could do is I could say, you know what? Normally, I don't want to do this. But every so often I do. So I could say HA proxy with keys. I could do something like that. In fact, let me let me do that right now. So I'll do that. 199 and user patman so now that will work so i'll say ha proxy with keys so there we go now another thing i need to do is i could uh, go up and do that i could run this add the keys and then sh over there that would work just fine but another thing you can do uh, if you want to do this is in one of your profiles or bash history or whatever you want to do whatever thing you have you could go in there and every single time you run, uh, you could add the keys. In fact, I'll leave that in there. So now every time this runs, 
it will actually run the SSH agent and add the key. So I'm good to go to jump into wherever I need to be, if that makes sense for you. Now, the nice thing when you do that, just because I did that, doesn't mean it's going to forward the keys. I have to put a dash capital A, or I can use my config file. So I'll save that. Uh, but that doesn't apply yet until I source it. So I'm going to source it. So I, I can start a new session. I can start a new window, and I'll get it. Or I can source bash profile and get the update. There we go. And you can see there it is. So it added it, it added the SSH agent is running. It added and it added the key. Good to go. Now I should for you may or may not have this set up, and I'll maybe I'll well maybe I'll go over it. It's interesting. I found this a long time ago, and I love it. it. Helps me out a lot for many different reasons. And bash profile fun. I think I have it here. Do I have it here or do I have it somewhere else? There we go. There's this long command where I can say, I want tab completion on my SSH config file. And so I found this little guy and you can probably find it somewhere. It's just this one liner. And what it will do is it'll go through your SSH config file and find all the host names. And then it'll apply that to use tab completion for secure copy SFTP and SSH. So it makes my life really easy. So if I forget a bunch of servers, I can use that and it kind of does the tab completion. So now if I do SHHA proxy, it's not going to forward the key because only on the other one. But if I do tab tab, it'll show my other option. And so now I'll do dash W tab and it completes. And so now I should have my key. In fact, I could do the SH add L and I can see my key is there. Let me see so remove dash R. Uh, there we go, get rid of that guy. So I wiped all that out. So now my keys are there, everything's good. Dude. Um, I didn't have to do anything special because that dash A is being applied and I clone. So that's another thing that I like to use. Um, be careful with that. You I mean you could add that to, if you're using SH config files, you could add that to every single one, which I think is dumb and dangerous. Uh, you could add it to one where you are always passing your keys in, or you could do something like this. You get an extra one that says with keys and without keys, you know, something like that. You got to uh, think about your security because, hey, it's not pure and safe and simple. You are giving during your session, someone could who has root access could pretend to be you and utilize that. But the time moment you end your session, you're safe and clear. So this is better but not perfect. If you're in a high security area with, with really important stuff, don't do this. There's a lot better practices. But if you're just, you know, it's a normal server, you want to pull some stuff, go in and out. You only have a small team that all have root access. You're not sipping each other's toes. It may be a good choice, but you need to evaluate that on a case by case basis. Be careful with it. It's powerful. It's nice. It's safer. It's not perfectly safe. And um, maybe other people can add to it or have some comments because they might know some pitfalls or some better links. Or maybe there's a maybe, maybe there's a better way to do this. But um, anyway, I like this that I would share. I use it a little bit when I need to, not often, but it is a very nice feature. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder.com. View any code I may have thrown up as a gist uh, at GitHub under the username Patman Denver, or check out my blog site at whiteboardcoder.com.